Assalamu alaikum, mahi mahi, barracuda. You're here because you want to know why I converted to al Islam. Let's start with the most convincing proof, the Quran. It's widely believed that the Quran has been miraculously preserved to the word, to the letter, and to the dot, right from the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Since so many people believe this, it must be true. In fact, the Quran was so well preserved that Uthman respectfully burned some other Qurans in his lifetime so that there will be fewer copies of the miraculously preserved Quran so that the other scriptures wouldn't look so bad in comparison. The Quran was miraculously preserved through the various systems of the eponymous readers of later centuries, through Ibn Majahid's systemization and yeah, elimination of some readings, and through Ibn al-Jazri's canonical editions, he, he added a couple, so what? And right through the 1924 standardization, where it was saved, saved, from being respectfully dumped in the Nile with some of the other Qurans that weren't so well preserved. And we all know, anyone who says the Quran is not miraculously preserved is automatically an Islamophobe and a liar. This is certainly something that no Muslim would say, because my famous Sheikh said not to talk about these kinds of things in public. It's not wise. But what the Quran says is most convincing of its divine origin. When I read the Quran the first time, it just felt, oh yes, yes, that's how I knew. Many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. This sort of unfalsifiable proof is the strongest evidence anyone could hope for. Because it can never be proven wrong. Which means it can only be right. I don't even read the Quran in Arabic. Initially I thought that would be a problem, but then I found out it's not. Most Muslims don't know Arabic, and it turns out, alhamdulillah, that you only need to know Arabic to criticize al-Islam, not to become a Muslim. What a relief, alhamdulillah. The religion of Islam is so accommodating. Speaking of which, what about Allah's accommodations for men in the Quran's paradise? Yeah. Some may say that the physical descriptions of the women of paradise as well as, you know, why they're there in the first place is a little bit sexist and more oriented towards the desires of 7th century barbarian men. But we should call that criticism what it is, Islamophobia. Besides, I hear if you read those verses in Arabic, the content is the same, but it sounds so much better. Alhamdulillah. Speaking of men in the 7th century, let me tell you about one of the most convincing proofs of them all. The man of men, Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the greatest person to ever live. Sure, according to the Quran, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wasn't born of a virgin. Muhammad sallallahu wasallam didn't do any miracles, nor did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam live a sinless life like Jesus in the Quran. But Muhammad sallallahu Do I have to keep saying that? Okay. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is still pretty special. You see, before I knew about Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa I lived an unfulfilled life. I only had one not really young wife, and I didn't even beat her. <laughs> no wonder we had so many problems. Also, I didn't know to kill apostates, to peacefully fight people who don't believe what I do, or to wage jihad, or to hate the Jews, who happen to be the descendants of monkeys and pigs. 
I didn't know that the sun sets in a spring of muddy water or that shooting stars are missiles to scare off demons. I didn't know that I'm supposed to dip a fly into my drink to neutralize the disease on one wing with a cure on the other or that a baby's appearance is determined by which parent discharges first. Now, true, science appears to contradict these obvious facts, but we should call that what it is, right? Islamophobia. As soon as scientists realize the truth of Alice Lamb, they'll come around to seeing the miraculous scientific knowledge of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Soon everyone will be dipping flies in their drinks, waiting eagerly for the day when super high-powered telescopes are developed that can actually see the demons that the shooting stars are chasing. Alhamdulillah, what a day that will be. But the best proof of Muhammad Salat, oh, forget it, his prophethood is his sexual potency. Everyone knows that a true prophet from God is going to be good in bed. And Muhammad could satisfy all of his wives in one night, wallahi. And there were lots of them. Sometimes he didn't even stop to take a bath in between. Now, you would think, with all that divine, prophetically induced intercourse, that Muhammad would have a lot of sons. <laughs> nope. Male heirs could mean that Muhammad wouldn't be the final prophet. So, they died young. All of them. This is clear proof of Muhammad's prophethood. It's so clear that we don't even need to talk about the moles on his back. But the greatest proof of the truth of Islam is that Christianity is false. Now, there are only these two choices, and one of them being false means the other is True. That's all the proof I need. Comparing these two religions, which, by the way, has been done by experts like Dr. Zakir Naik, it proves this is true beyond a shadow of a doubt. And logically, since Christianity being false also means that Islam is true, we can go even further and say that the Bible being corrupted also means that the Quran has been miraculously preserved. More proof. <laughs> and the same people who tell me the Quran is miraculously preserved are the people who tell me that the Bible is hopelessly corrupted. So I know they aren't lying. It all makes sense. Alhamdulillah. Allah saved all of his preservation power for the Quran and didn't waste any of it on the previous scriptures. This means that the Quran is extra preserved. Now, these things I'm told to believe have flourished in Islamic peer-reviewed echo chambers for centuries, where they've evolved completely free of bothersome things like scrutiny and questioning. Now, in case that was too technical for you, I'll put it in layman's terms. These claims have stood the test of time. But be careful when comparing Christianity and Islam. Those Christians are really sneaky. Get this. They read what Islamic sources say, but they don't reinterpret them in a way that aligns with our presuppositions about what our sources should say. And if Christians reading the Quran, say that it means something different from what millions of Muslims who don't read the Quran think that the Quran should say, then clearly the Christians are wrong. That's according to my imam. I don't actually come up with these answers. I just repeat what he says. That's what my sheikh told me to do. He said thinking on my own is dangerous. Some of those sneaky Christians, they even say that the Quran actually speaks approvingly 
of the Bible. But we should call that claim what it is. Islamophobia. The Quran is clearly speaking highly of another Torah and gospel that nobody has ever heard of. This is the best explanation because it's both ad hoc and unfalsifiable. And ad hoc explanations make me feel good. And feeling good is proof of the truth of Al-Islam. I hope this video has clearly described to you why I converted to Islam. Once converting, you can stay a Muslim by ensuring you don't question the faith. For example, when you encounter a, a troubling verse in the Quran, if you happen to read it, you don't need to. But if it happens, just say, Allah knows best. And simply disregard any of the hundreds of hadith that are no longer defensible in the modern world. And Well, if you're still thinking about leaving Islam, you know what happens. This isn't part of our religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah, there's a reason why there's a capital punishment because people like you, little weaklings who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it, the capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt and we're proud of that. And we, you know what, we'll be watching. I have to admit, sometimes when I begin to think for myself, I have actually considered leaving Islam. Sometimes all the peaceful fighting, the Sexist descriptions of paradise, the Muhammad of the Hadith, the legends in the Quran, and the way that women are treated, it really gets to me. But I know what can happen to people who leave Islam. But plenty of people still have. Maybe I can too. That's it. You know what? I am leaving Islam. Ah!